I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. So you might be thinking this is a lot of stuff for one bike ride, uh, but I assure you it's appropriate, uh, except I don't need Goofy, that, that's just Creature brought that over here. Um, so Everesting, the idea of Everesting is to complete the equivalent of Mount Everest in one bike ride, uh, up and down the same hill over and over. So that's 29,000, 29 feet or 32 feet. That's another whole discussion. I'm gonna do 32 just to make sure. The The record for Everesting a year ago was around, I, I think it was eight and a half hours. Um, I had the idea, I, I was kind of the first pro person to, to go for it. Um, I geeked out on it, I put a bunch of time into it and I set the record last year, uh, which held for exactly four days. Um, and since then it became the thing during COVID all the pros like I want to see what I can do and the record the record crashed it went down from eight and a half hours to now it's just under seven um, and I learned a lot from watching this I didn't want to try again right away because I knew it was gonna keep going down as people learn new strategies so what we learned from other people's Everesting attempts was that the steeper the hill the better the record um, and that's that was almost all of it so my my spring and summer last year turned into a quest for finding the steepest hill that had a straight up and down, no downhill or no, no turns in the downhill, um, but was steep enough and long enough that I'm not just doing turns over and over. It was, it was a worldwide quest, which was difficult because we're not traveling right now. Um, and I ended up finding one finally in Malibu, basically in my backyard, that it's not, it's not perfect, but, uh, but it's close enough. So I've had the climb uh, researched and verified by Integrated Informatics, so it's certified for the record. Uh, it's 443.85 feet per lap. Um, and what that, what that means is 65.4 laps is what I've got to complete. Um, it's around like 17%. So the reason it's not perfect is it's like 19 and then 10 and then 19 again. So it's uh, really at no point is it comfortable. <laughs> All right, so when the dogs are ready, um, I'll just go through what the amount of the stuff I have. I haven't decided if I want to wear a long sleeve speed suit uh, or short sleeve speed suit. It's going to be hotter than I'd like it to be tomorrow, so it'll be a game time decision. Um, got some cookie gators for the for the staff, for the folks who are, who are going to be helping me out. We're going to have uh, socially distanced pairs uh, at, at different points to traffic control and, and feed zone, stuff like that, because um, I don't want to get hit by a car. Uh, socks, obviously, uh, got some CBD, uh, shoes are going to be a good move. Uh, split, I, I don't know how many I'm going to need. The, 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 the volunteers will probably snack some of these, but I'm going to try and eat two or three of these an hour. They're 160 calories each, um, so I can't really have too much of that. Um, of course, the gloves, and then some, some lotions to, to slather on myself. Uh, helmet and then this guy this is instead of like drive when I drive over there instead of a uh, compression I have this little firefly pulse gizmo so I don't have to sweat my legs off while I uh, while I get the blood circulating basically I'm warming up on the way there Do that. all right for hydration uh, I'm gonna try and drink like a bottle and a half an hour uh, one scoop 130 calories so uh, I'm, I'm my own soigneur, so I'm trying to prep the night before with, uh, with my, I mean, I have a soigneur. I'm sorry, creature, you're right. You do a great job. It's good enough. It's fucking gold. The other way uh, I'm gonna be my own soigneur is with ice socks, and I, thankfully, I, rem I didn't throw away the stockings I bought last time. So what you do for ice socks, so tomorrow, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 76 degrees is the high, which is annoying because it's mid-January, uh, but SoCal will do that to you. Um, so, you know, which 76 isn't postpone it kind of hot, but it is, uh, it is, I need some ice socks hot. So what you do is you just buy regular stockings, you cut them in a little, little strips, throw some ice in there, and then you just tie a little knot, 
And, uh, and so I'm just gonna have a stack of those to, to keep me a little bit cooler. It, it really, it makes a big difference. So the other consideration was, was the bike. Uh, obviously I need a bike that was super light, something like this, uh, but ready to go up crazy steep gradients and then still safe to go downhill. Um, so those are all the considerations. So we, with a mix of, there's mountain bike parts, there's parts removed. Um, I'll do a separate video about that, but Velofix built up my factor van with, uh, with Shimano XTR components and power meter and everything is crazy light and built for this and we did saw the handlebars basically damn it creature it's fine it's still rolling all right there there has been some construction when i've, I've done a bunch of recon on on Trancus. um there there is like a construction site kind of in the middle and so they they get there at eight um they they go down for lunch they go then they leave again around uh, around like 4 p.m. most days. I will have some uh, some police officers helping me out. Some deputies are going to be parked there. Uh, shout out to Rusty from LAPD. Um, but the but I got basically I got a couple friends to keep it safe. My buddies Ryan and Jared. So we're all in in quarantine pairs basically. Everyone's going to be in different stations. And then uh, and then my my training partners uh, Ben and Muni are going to be roving around filming and uh, and entertaining themselves. So that's. That's that's the team. So we've got we've got a few people out, but not too many, and obviously no crowds. So uh, we're trying to we're trying to keep this COVID smart at this point. So just park in front of elephants and we'll move all these things. When I'm coming down, you guys are looking at the driveways. You're looking at cars that might be there because where you're going to be is the only spot that I can't see when I'm ripping down. Um, so there's just going to be hand signals. If there's if there's a car coming, you're just going to wave frantically <laughs> if there's anything there, and I'm just going to scrub as much speed as I can. Okay, so That's there's it. A, if, there's a car coming up, if, there's, if there's anything that could be in my way that you see when I'm when I'm coming down, I'm just going to assume it's blocking the entire road and I have to come to a complete stop. Okay. Um, yeah. So only kick and scream. Yeah, I don't need any signals other than holy living fuck, everything's bad. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh -huh. I'm, so all I'm doing is I'm starting there, going to the dead end, and then I turn around. Oh, I gotta do 65 laps. I understand what you're saying, and this is probably a good place to do it. It is, yeah. I've, I've done I've done a million laps here. Okay, morning tinkle down at the park, pre-ride tinkle. Go, go, go! This is me going. King of the Mountains polka dot strap at the top of the hill here. Totally random. I know Ben was coming. He's coming down. Lap one. All right, so it's 40 seconds on the way down. That's Eight fast. seconds from the feed zone.
Okay, he's turning around now. He's coming down. More clear. Okay, he just turned around four seconds ago. How's it going? I heard him. Thank you. Okay. On his way down. You got this, man. You got this. Fantastic pace. Man, is he turning around coming down yet? Turning around in five seconds. On his way down.
On his way down. Assuming you want today, Kevin Quiet. I'll make a video of it. You're rolling? <laughs> oh, well. That has to go. <laughs> if I got all of them, then it wouldn't be an interesting video. You know what I mean? If no, I, it's I, good that people know that like world record attempts aren't aren't just done willy-nilly. I was on pace the first like four hours, and then I wasn't anymore. Um, I was doing like six. I was trying to do six minute, fifteen second laps, and then it was like. 6.45 and there's two hours left and it's still like 80 something degrees. Um, if I have an excuse, it's the Los Angeles weather. That uh, it was, last week it was in the 60s, it looked good. And then this week it was a high of 76 today. And I was like, that's not too hot to cancel it. And then I get out here and it's in the mid 80s. Um, and I'm covered in salt and boiling. So like, no matter how you do the hydration, all that right, it's just, it's gonna slow you down for sure. There he is. Damn it, he figured it out. I didn't really have the, the wherewithal to explain myself when I was sitting on the curb uh, grumpy. But now that I've had several days to edit videos of my own failure, <laughs> uh, that's been a lot of fun. I'll explain basically the, the forecast for that day when I planned, when I picked the day. Uh, I said 66 degrees was the high. And, you know, as you could see, I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of walkie-talkies, went ahead and tell the police about it. Um, and then the day of, the forecast went up to 76, which is uh, not ideal. And then on the hill, it was up to 86. So with, with two hours and change left, uh, ideally, I, I decided, I was, I was thinking like, I, there's a chance I could still get the record in that ride, but I also knew that the I wasn't gonna get my best effort that day. It was for sure gonna cost me, even in a race, like, you know, hydration is a factor and the best person wins but for a, a record attempt uh ideal conditions obviously matter so it's going to cost me time and i was going to want to do it again <laughs> uh so in my head i was like if i stop now at, at four and a half hours then it was just a good training day uh if i keep going i'll i'll annihilate myself and it'll take me a month to recover so um, I pulled the plug. It was the right decision. I'm, I'm still very annoyed by, uh, by the whole situation. So I didn't want to just delete the video and act like it never happened. Um, if I got every KOM I went for, then it wouldn't be an interesting channel uh, or an interesting life. Uh, and if I accomplished all my goals, then what would I do tomorrow? I do want to thank everyone who, who came out to help. Uh, Jared and Ryan, uh, Royce, Stefan, Jesse in the feed zone, uh, Ben and Muni for, for helping uh, film. Uh, and of course, uh, Velofix, Charlie Gray for, for being there for support that thankfully I didn't need. Um, and, and finally, my lovely fiance, Emily. Uh, and they're all down for the next attempt when, whenever that'll be. So I'll keep you guys posted. See ya.